My brothers and sisters, I'm sure we are aware that we are within the 10 best days of the Islamic year. And I'm sure we've come across the hadith or we've heard it, the hadith of Ibn Abbas in radiallahu anhuma, wherein he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهِنَّ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْعَشْرِ there are no days of the year wherein good deeds are more loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than those that are done within these 10 days. Referring to the first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah, we are well within these 10 days. But I want to draw your attention to a few very important factors. When we think to ourselves, that Allah loves good deeds during these days more than He does throughout the year, what's the first thing that comes to our minds? I'm sure almost all of us, myself included, we start thinking of doing extra deeds and we start thinking perhaps I can read a Quran, perhaps I can do some nafil and sunnah, perhaps I can be charitable, perhaps I can you know, do something that is voluntary, etc., not realizing that that is not where you start. That is never a starting point. And this is something that we need to clarify because many times shaitan makes us think about that which is voluntary when we have not yet considered that which was obligatory and farad. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that the most loved deeds... The deeds that I love the most from any one of my worshippers are those deeds that I have made compulsory and farad upon them. Which means your farad salah. It means your zakah. It means your fasting in the month of Ramadan, that which is farad. It means also that we should be abstaining from that which is haram, that which is sinful. Because what is the point, really, of a person who engages in lots of voluntary deeds, but they are perpetrating adultery, they are deceiving and cheating people, they are consuming usury and interest, they are perhaps gambling and on drugs and so on. We need to make a greater effort to become from among those who can quit this. So if you, during these days, decide that I have quit, this bad habit that I have had for so long, wallahi, it is better for you than engaging in extra voluntary deeds while you have wiped them out by perpetrating sins that are major. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to abstain from major sin. So when you hear that Allah loves good deeds the most, the first thing that should come to your mind is farad. That which is compulsory. Do I get up for Fajr? Let me get up early. Let me take a little bit more time in the way I fulfill my Salah. If my Fajr is five minutes every morning, let's make it ten. Because this is a good deed. It's the deed that Allah loves the most. And I'm in these ten days of Dhul Hijjah. And I would like to improve myself as a person. So let me start increasing in terms of the quality of the good deed. Sometimes we end up missing Farad. We miss our Farad. And then we sit with a sunnah, uh, salah, and we fulfill without having made qada. Qada meaning that which is uh, fulfilling your lost salah. That which you missed for some reason, you now need to make it up. It's called qada. So it's more important to do qada than it is to do the sunnah or that which is voluntary. My brothers and sisters, this is a very interesting point. When we would like to Please, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing we should do, we ask ourselves two questions. If you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask yourself two questions. The first question is, have I fulfilled my obligations unto Allah? Allah asked me to do certain things. Allah has requested from me certain things. Have I fulfilled these things? It's very interesting. Allah asked you to fulfill your salah. Allah asked you to do so many things. We know what the duties are. Allah asked you to dress in a specific way. Allah asked you to speak in a specific way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has required from you um, that you eat a specific type of food, etc. Have I fulfilled the obligation unto Allah? Obligation, that which is farad. The second question is, have I stayed away from that which will anger Allah? Those are the two questions. If you can answer those questions with the correct responses, you are heading in the right direction. Now, shaitan will come to us. What does he tamper with? 
Shaitan usually tempers with one of these two things. Either he makes you leave your farad or he makes you engage in sin. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us one of the greatest acts of worship. Do you know what it is? He taught it to Adam alayhi salam. A very great act of worship. After a sin was committed and Adam alayhi salam ate that which he was not supposed to eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him some words. Allah gave him a few words, taught him these words. What were these words? رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا وَإِن لَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh our Rabb, oh Allah. Now Allah is teaching Adam alayhi salam to say this. So we need to say this too. We say, oh our Rabb, Rabbana. ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا We have wronged ourselves. What we did just now was very wrong. It was oppressing ourselves. And if you don't forgive us, and if you don't have mercy upon us, we are going to lose. So Allah taught Adam alayhi salam those words. Adam alayhi salam said those words genuinely, and he was forgiven. And Allah made tawbah one of the biggest acts of worship. So much so that the hadith says, tawbah wipes out whatever sins you've made in the past. You know, when a person is not a Muslim, they've done whatever they may have done in their past life. They revert to Islam as they enter the fold of Islam and declare what we know as the shahada, bearing witness that there is only one deity worthy of worship, who is Allah. And bearing witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger of Allah. Once they declare that shahada, guess what happens to them? All their bad deeds are wiped out. All their bad deeds are wiped out. It is selected formatting. It's not that everything's wiped out. All your bad deeds are wiped out. That's what happens when you engage in tawbah for those who are already believers. Because sometimes a person might feel you know, when you don't really know or you don't have deep knowledge, you might think, look, you know, people who enter Islam, they're forgiven totally, right? What if I exit it and enter it again? I'm formatting my hard drive, right? That is foolish thinking, subhanallah. We are not allowed to think that way. Allah does you a favor. Allah says, we will give you that as a gift if you just ask Allah's forgiveness. Subhanallah, that person was not a believer. They accepted Islam. You are a believer. You just have to say, oh Allah, forgive me. That is such a great act of worship. I call upon yourselves and myself during these 10 days to engage in that which is most beloved to Allah and that is seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declaring the remembrance and the greatness of Allah. وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ The Quran says, encouraging us to remember the name of Allah during specific days. Go to the tafsir and you will find that some of the mufassireen have said that these specific days are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. We are in them right now. So remember Allah often. We all know that we should increase takbir. Don't wait for the day that the takbir commences in the masjid after the farad salah. Don't wait for that day. Yes, when that day comes, you will participate in that takbir that is read after farad salah. But throughout these 10 days, we are supposed to be repeating that takbir and various other takbirat. What is that takbir? Takbir means the declaration of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it goes as follows. The sunnah wording. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Subhanallah, amazing words. There are two different ways of saying it. You can have three takbirs right at the beginning. So you could also say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Either you say it twice or thrice right at the beginning. You're declaring the greatness of Allah. You are saying there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and He is the greatest and all praise belongs to Allah. So Allah says, say that, subhanallah. Do we say it? Another very interesting aspect is when you remember Allah within yourself, like say my mouth is closed, I haven't moved my lips, in my mind I'm thinking of Allah. It's an act of worship. And the hadith says, مَن ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ Whoever remembers me, Within himself, I remember him within myself. How? Allah knows best. But Allah says, you know, people do remember Allah within themselves. It's an interesting act of worship, very important. But 
I can teach you a greater act of worship to make an effort to move your tongue, to move your lips, to use a bit of your voice. Why? It's a very big act of worship, far greater than thinking only. Start saying it. So when we are sitting, a lot of the times what happens to me nowadays, I'll be honest with you. You're reading your phone and you get a message. Someone passed away. Someone is sick. Someone, something bad has happened, for example. Sometimes you end up saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un in your mind. And you make a dua for them in your mind. Wallahi, let's not forget. Just because technology has advanced, we need to also say that aloud. Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, cure him. Let's seize an opportunity, my brothers and sisters. People have passed away. May Allah give them Jannatul Firdaus. Say Amin. People are sick and ill right now as we are talking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure them, whoever they are. Say Ameen. And one more. People are struggling and suffering across the globe as we speak. Whoever they are, wherever they are, we pray for them. May Allah alleviate their suffering. Ameen. So to say it, why is it better? Because your tongue bears witness, your voice bears witness, your organs bear witness, your lips bear witness. It's a greater act of worship. For example, if you were to remember Allah, uh, with your tongue and if you were to get up and you were to fulfill two units of prayer what would happen the two units of prayer would probably get you to a place slightly higher if it was done in the proper way because I tell you now your whole organs the organs have moved your feet have moved your your forehead is going to bear witness for you that this man prostrated and aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu li rabbihi wa huwa sajid the closest you can ever as a worshiper be to allah is in the position of sujood prostration allah loves that position so if allah loves that position so much and these days are most beloved unto allah why don't we fulfill our salah at least the farad on time I want every one of us, myself included, to bear in mind one thing. Whenever you are reading your salah, please take your time. Why? The hadith says, Salli salata muwadda'in. Every time you fulfill salah, fulfill it as though it is the final prayer that you are fulfilling in your life. Farewell prayer. If someone told you, listen, you're dying at two o'clock. This is your last Jum'ah. I think up to five to two. In fact, we'll extend it beyond, right? We want to die in Salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us when He takes us away. And honestly speaking, if I can just divert for a second, the best death is that death wherein Allah is pleased with you. No matter what age you pass away, no matter how you pass away, no matter who was with you and wasn't with you and where you were, all that is irrelevant. If Allah is pleased with you, Wallahi, you have the best death. And if Allah was displeased with you, even if you died smooth, sweet, without much feeling, subhanallah, trust me, we have lost. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So let's go back to what I was saying. We have the best days and we have the best acts of worship. Now, if we bring them together, we'll realize one thing. Today is a Friday. Do you know that the Friday is the Eid of the Muslimin, the Eid of the week? It's actually the best day of the week, without a doubt. The hadith says the best day that the sun has risen upon, the Friday. Adam. On it, Adam alayhi salam was created. And so many things have happened on this day. But I tell you, if the Friday is the best day of the week, and the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the best days of the year, what do you think would be the value of a Friday inside of those 10 days? Let's seize the opportunity to seek the forgiveness of Allah. May Allah forgive all of us. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us for those sins we've committed that we know and those that we don't know. And together with that forgiveness, may Allah purify our hearts so that we can become people who are consciously changing themselves, bringing themselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the way. Now, one clarification also, some of you might be thinking, what about Ramadan? Surely Laylatul Qadr, surely Ramadan. I tell you, very interesting. Ramadan, the nights are better. The last 10 nights of Ramadan are the best nights. Here we are talking about the best days. You see the difference? Why? Because in Ramadan, we have one night that is more powerful than a thousand months, and that is Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Allah says the night of decree known as Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months. So that's the best night. And the best 10 nights are the last 10 nights of Ramadan. But the days, because there is the day of Arafah being the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, is the day of Arafah. It is the most 
powerful day. It is Yawm al Hajj al Akbar. It is called the day of Hajj. That is what it is. You miss Arafah, you missed Hajj. What should we do? Well, I tell you the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you want to know how powerful is the day of Arafah. If you have gone for Hajj, you are in Arafah. But if you have not gone for Hajj, the Sunnah is to fast on the day, the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. Try not to miss that fast because the Hadith says, you kafiru sana, it forgives and expiates the sins of the previous year and the current year. Amazing how powerful this beautiful day is. One day, the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, fast it. Fasting for the non-haji. Non-haji means those who are not gone for hajj. If you are in hajj, it's not a sunnah to fast on that day because it's a day of action. And it's a day when you are actually going to be in Arafah, it's hot and whatever else might be, and you might be busy. It's not a sunnah to fast. When you are in hajj, you are there. When you're not in hajj, wallahi, our, our Eid is going to be on a Friday. Thursday, to fast that particular Thursday is such a great reward. I encourage yourselves and myself, inshallah, if we can, to fast on that day. Because it's a beautiful deed. And Allah says, you know what? I love the good deeds the most during this uh, season so much that if you are to fast on that day, I'm going to forgive all your sins. I'm sure we all want a new beginning. I'm sure we all want redemption. I'm sure we'd all love to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah is giving you a bonus. Now, have you ever thought that how merciful a Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every little while, He gives us a blessed day, a blessed season. We have Muharram, you have the 10th of Muharram, powerful, subhanallah. You have the season of Hajj, you have the season of Dhul Hijjah, one after the other. It comes two, three times a year. And this is amazing because Allah keeps reminding us, no matter what shaitan has done to you, my mercy, one droplet of it will wipe out whatever shaitan has done. Remember that. You can have worked with shaitan for 70 years. And then you can have spent one minute with Allah. That one minute, trust me, if it was done correctly, it will wipe out 70 years of what the devil has built within an individual. So never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. But we need to be moved. We need to be motivated. Too many distractions happening around us. That is why Allah says, hang on, start concentrating on your farad, that which is compulsory. You'll enjoy it. How many of us pick up the Quran and we read even a verse every morning. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, try it. It's not asking of much. One verse, one verse every morning. Even from your phone, your application on your phone, pick it up, read one, only one. Trust me, it will go to two and to three and you will enjoy it and you will look at the meaning of it and you will start passing it to your friends. That's the power of Allah. If haram can magnetize you so much when you forget Allah, trust me, when you start remembering Allah, that halal will magnetize you in a more powerful way. Trust me, it requires an effort. You see, one might ask that, so if Allah knows everything about us, then why, did, why didn't He just tell us, okay guys, you know what, I'll give you Jannah, don't worry about your deeds. No, the thing is, Allah has placed us here in order to recognize us with us being our own witness. So Allah knows me, Allah knows you, Allah knows everything about us. But what about you? Imagine there was a court case without witness, they just jailed you. You would say, but I didn't do this. So the judge says, well, we knew you were going to do it. So we jail you, you know, before. I remember there was a, a certain a person, whenever he used to send a child to go and do something, he used to call him and slap him and say, now take the milk. He says, but why did you slap me? He says, what's the point of slapping you after you drop the milk? I'd rather slap you before you drop the milk so that you don't drop it. So similarly, it is injustice or it is unjust for anyone to punish us for a crime we did not commit. So Allah says, go to earth. When you go to the earth, do whatever you have to. I have told you what to do, what not to do. When you come back, you can bear witness against yourself. You can bear witness against yourself. Did you do this? Yes, I did. Who did it? You. Do you deserve the punishment? Yes. Guess what? Through my mercy, I'm going to forgive you. You can still go to Jannah. That is Allah. May Allah grant that to us. That is the Rahma of Allah. Subhanallah. Yuridu Allah an yatuba alaykum wa yuridu alladhina yattabi'una ash-shahawati an tamilu maylan azima 
Allah says in the Quran, He wants to forgive you. Allah is looking for any excuse to forgive you. But those who follow the, their desires, whims and fancies, shahawat means immorality, the immoral paths of the world, they would like the rest of us to actually be twisted a very, very strong twisting, to be diverted in a very, very strong way. Let's not be diverted by the devil. My brothers and sisters, let's remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy encompasses everything. For him to have asked us to do things so that we can bear witness for ourselves or against ourselves, we have an opportunity to prove ourselves. So let's prove ourselves to Allah. The same way, if someone were to ask you, do you know this brother? The answer is, I know about him. Perhaps I have seen him. But if you are asking me for a point of reference, I need to have done business with him. I need to have traveled with him. I need to have known him, lived with him. I need to have been interacting with him and done dealings with him because I need to have checked him at a time when things did not go his way. That's when he can prove himself. Remember this. All of us, we don't know each other. Besides, he's a brother of mine. Until the day you are bitten by the person, when things don't go their way, then you learn, oh, now I know. Why? Things did not go his way. There was a loss in the business, he cheated me. Something happened. The same applies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah knew everything. Where Allah says, we leave you. Al-aslu bara'atu dhimma. We leave you, we let you do whatever you have to. The day things don't go your way, do you actually thank Allah? Does it bring you closer to Allah? Because I promise you, when things are bad, you turn in one of two ways. Some people become very bad. They start questioning Allah. You lost a life, you lost someone's, uh, someone lost their health, something bad happened. What do some people do? They start questioning Allah. They go far away from Allah. In that case, they lost. But a mu'min, when you have a problem, it's supposed to bring you closer to Allah. So your problem defines you, not only with Allah, even with the rest of the human beings. Mark those words, write them down in gold ink and read them every day. Subhanallah. Your problem defines you. When something happens in your life, your family, your spouse, a big mistake happened, it will define you. Who are you? You only get to prove yourself when something very bad happened or negative happened or something happened in your life that was not according to your liking. That's the only time, the only time you can prove yourself. And that's when we prove ourselves. That's when we get to know each other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us prove ourselves to Him to begin with. Because when you prove yourself to Allah, trust me, you don't need to worry about anyone else. Allah will deal with everything else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for us in the dunya as well as the akhirah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.